Ukraine may sink Russian oil tankers this time after attacks on oil refineries. A combination of Russian Western and other tankers export almost $10 billion of Russian crude from the Black Sea every month, according to the Kyiv Post media outlet that equals the entirety of Russia's defense budget. The publication notes that the oil continues to flow only because the US and Western Europe so desire. In essence, the US is protecting Russian oil exports and allowing Russia to fund the war thereby. Ending this trade would materially degrade Russia's ability to conduct the war. It would also raise oil prices comfortably to $150 and perhaps as high as $200 per barrel. This would push Europe into a steep recession and would similarly punish US consumers. A strike on a Russian tanker would also panic the White House, prompting a swift and desperately needed restructuring of the price cap. Ukraine will not win the war without it, the Kyiv Post said. It is noted that attacking Russian tankers is, of course, a politically risky option. A very risky option. On the other hand, certain defeat at the hands of the Russians is a much higher price to pay. If push comes to shove, the Ukrainians need to shove. Marjorie Taylor Greene and the MAGA Republicans need to decide if they want to own $6 unleaded as the Ukraine vote reaches the House floor. Kyiv Post says that despite US fretting, European gasoline and diesel prices do not appear materially affected by Ukraine's attacks on Russian refineries. Overall, oil prices are developing much as expected and against Ukraine's interest. The easiest, though high risk, way to motivate a desperately needed and vastly overdue restructuring of the price cap would be an attack on an oil tanker carrying Russian crude in the Black Sea. If the House fails to fund Ukraine and the White House declines to revisit the price cap, it might come down to that. Two people have been killed in a Russian attack on the city of Dnipro on April 19. Six more have been killed in the city of Senelnikov, including two children, and 29 other residents of the oblast have been injured. The five-story building in Dnipro was partially destroyed and on fire, potentially trapping people under the rubble. Two infrastructure facilities were damaged too. In Senelnikov, four private houses were partially destroyed, and eight more were damaged. The region had survived another massive attack, with Ukrainian air defense forces shooting down some of the enemy targets, including nine missiles in the morning and two more overnight. However, some missiles still managed to hit their targets. I and Pavlorad, an enterprise was damaged, while the cities of Nikopol and Marinets were shelled with artillery in the evening, resulting in damage to two private houses. The number of casualties continues to rise as the rescue operation is ongoing. The Russians also attacked the Nikopol district. In the evening, they shelled the town of Nikopol with artillery and Marinets Romata overnight, damaging two private houses. Unfortunately, the number of the dead and injured will grow. We are continuing to clear the rubble of the damaged houses. Aid stations have been set up on the ground. Psychologists are at work. The police are accepting statements from those affected, Interior Minister Iyer Klemenko said.
Днепр вокзал последствия обстрела утрешнего. Вот, не мог дома. Такая себе обстановочка. Но мы помогли, сколько смогли. Здесь, пока не приехали пожарные. Скоро компетентные люди. Это жесть. Зашел этот людям. Thank you.